why do referees get abused? Well, A, because we're, it, it's ingrained in, within us. They are the evil people. Sorry, James, you are evil. Uh, but because, you know, our teams are the ones wearing white hats, the opposition, the, the bad guys and the referees are part of the bad guys because they're the 14th, 18th, whatever man, 19th man. But when the clubs themselves on social media cast aspersions on decisions made by the match officials and have done this constantly for years and nothing changes, then I ask... Why aren't the RFL doing something about it? Because this is not a new issue. Yeah, you know, it's different from I know people saying, oh, the, the commentary on BBC Radio, whatever is is biased. And whether it is or not, that's that's of no uh problem to me whatsoever. It is what it is. It's an editorial decision. But when a club tweets the referee got it wrong, that that is an issue. That is an issue, and it does need to be dealt with. I think that's the point that. Um, I was hoping to make was that this is an official outlet. This is not to say fans can't criticise officials. It's their inalienable right to do so. How they do it and in what manner they do it, we can debate and have debated and clearly there is no uh, tolerance for any level of abuse. But what stirs up the fans perhaps to criticise the referee is when they see their official club social media account saying that um, a man in the middle has got a decision wrong. Now, they're watching it, as far as I know, the same as as, as we are. You know, they're at the ground. They're, they're probably in the press box. Um, they have a, a an instantaneous view of something. They don't have recourse to being right next to it on the field. They don't un, you know, have the ability to look at it at different angles. They, they are making an instantaneous judgment on what they've seen. And if they're, if the official social media feed of any club, and it's not aimed at the two clubs that happen to be playing, it, it was just exacerbated by watching what we, we were watching and seeing some of their reaction to it. That becomes an official mouthpiece of that club. Whether the club like it or not, whether they put somebody in charge of their social media feed who's employed by them or whether it's a volunteer or whether it's a fan, it doesn't matter. That is the official, at that moment, um, opinion of that club on that decision. And if you don't use the word allegedly, if you don't use things like suspected, if you say, oh, the opposition have run away and scored a try because the official has made a mistake, then you are giving license to all of your fans to, to have a mass pile on. And I think that, you know, that is something that the game itself needs to take far more seriously and that it, it might be an education thing in the first instant. Who have you got doing your social media feed? What have you briefed them on what they can and can't say? It might be that if it's something that you continually do, you have to be fined. Um, you know, there has to be a consequence. I look at some of the social media feeds, for example, of people like Sheffield, and they are very, very funny. You know, I, I don't know who is in charge of their their feed, um, but it's very self-deprecating. It never blames an official for a deficiency of the team. And often it takes the mickey out of themselves if they've done something wrong. And that is really commendable. I look at some other clubs and I say, I didn't name them deliberately. You know, if people want to equate the fact that a time a game was on as to when that comment was made. That's entirely up to them. But there are some who get it consistently wrong and who, again, going back to the Salford-Leeds game, look for a blame outlet at the time of an incident, and it's wrong that that should be under the club's official crest, in my opinion. I'm, I'm presuming the Sheffield uh, social media is not run by Mark Aston, because he's <laughs> famous for criticising referees. <laughs> uh, but you're absolutely right, it does open the floodgates. And, uh, well, I would have thought uh, it should be in the operational rules somewhere, so that might be a task for you, Richard, for the next week. Some bedtime reading again. I've got to do some hoovering. Uh, I'm in trouble. Um, I, I mean, fair play to Wakefield when I worked there. They didn't give me the password to Twitter, so I couldn't get in trouble. So that was uh, that was good. 